Alright guys, it's video number two. Today's Makerspace safety video covers hand tools. This is the beginning of what you're going to need to get certified on using all sorts of cool tools here in Makerspace. This video is going to help certify you on hammers, mallets, screwdrivers, wrenches, and pliers. I know, some of you guys are like, but I use this stuff all the time with my dad at home in the garage. That's great, but we're not at home with your dad in the garage. We're here at school, and certain precautions need to be taken. Okay? First thing we're going to discuss, we're going to talk about hammers versus mallets. Uh, make sure my board goes. Oh. Alright. Both are used for striking. Okay? The, ham the mallets we have here in school are rubber mallets. Both sides have both sides have flat ends for striking things. Okay. They're also rubber, if I didn't already say that. Second, uh, the second thing we have in here is a hammer. It's your standard 16 ounce claw hammer. It has a flat end for striking things like nails and it has a claw hammer end. Okay. Hammers are used to beat down nails and other binding hardware. Screws that you might need to get out. Um, maybe a bolt that needs to be pounded in maybe a little bit more. It's used for pounding, I know. You're like, I got it, Marriott. It can also be used to break things apart, whether it be wood that you've got nailed together and you can't get the nails out, whether you need to break a rock up. If you're going to be breaking things apart that might shatter, it's a good idea to cover it in a towel first and then hit it. That way it stops shards from flying. And like anything, uh-oh, I got tools in my hands, I need to have my safety goggles on. That way no accidents happen. Okay? The claw end of this is used for one thing and one thing only here in Makerspace. To remove nails and binding hardware like screws. I don't want to see you using the claw end to chisel things. I don't want to see you use the claw end to try to make holes or gouge things. It's used to pull apart nails out of the wood or other materials. That's it. Now, a mallet, a mallet pretty much is used to beat things into place but is more delicate than a hammer. That metal head to the hammer is really going to bang up your wood and ding up the materials that you're working with. This, if you need to get something in place, you might need to beat down on it with the hammer. That way it locks it in place or it gets it nudged up where you need it when you're really messing with tight fitting materials. I used our mallet when I was building our shelves to hammer it down in place. It's going to do less damage. The one thing you will not use this mallet to do though is beat down nails because as you can see it's got some indentations on it from where I already used this mallet. If you beat it up on nails it's going to tear it up, scuff it up and then we're not going to have them. Mallets are for pounding things that, that are a little bit more delicate that you don't want to damage the material on. Screwdrivers. Like I said, you guys are like, Mr. Marriott, I use screwdrivers all the time in class. I know. Or at home. But in class, there's some things that I want to make sure that, I'm, that you know. And there's some things that I think it's important to teach you. The most two common types of screwdrivers are your flathead screwdriver. It's got the flat head. See? Often you'll see symbols that look similar to that. And then you have your Phillips head screwdriver. That's the one that kind of looks like a star. I don't want to call it a star-headed screwdriver because we actually do have screws and bolts that need a star headed screwdriver and they do make those but most of what we're going to use in the makerspace is going to going to fit into one of these two categories okay uh, usually when when you can I try to use Phillips head screwdrivers because they do a better job at locking on to the screw and Phillips head screws are easier to tighten down than trying to tighten down a flat head because it tends to slip out of the groove a little bit okay now Screwdrivers can also be used as levers okay, to help pry things open. I'm sure you've been in the garage and your dad's used it to open up a paint can or pry two pieces of board apart. That's fine, but when we're using it in Makerspace, I want you to be very careful if you're going to use it as a lever because if it slips, this has the ability to gouge you and puncture your leg or puncture your arm if you're not careful with it. In general, I'd prefer you not to be using them as levers at all, but there might come a time we need to pry things apart. Now, also be careful that depending on what you're doing and what you're trying to pry apart with a screwdriver, uh, make sure that you're not using a really skinny screwdriver that's going to bend. Because once we destroy these tools, it costs money to replace them here in Makerspace. Okay? Oh, the one thing I don't want you doing with screwdrivers, I shouldn't even have to say this, 
but I'm going to say it anyway, is under no circumstance in Makerspace are you ever going to use a screwdriver to puncture a hole in a material such as plastics or in styrofoam or make any kind of hole because the stabbing action, if we slip, can go really wrong. And we have to be safe first. Wrenches and pliers. Okay, let's start with wrenches. We're going to have another video that I'm going to want you to watch on the difference between the metric wrenches and standard American wrenches. But a wrench is pretty simple. It's designed to tighten down and loosen down bolts. Okay, uh, Most wrenches that you use have some kind of open-ended crescent wrench side like this. It might also have some kind of circular side that's kind of like your ratchet sets that bolt down and they're easy to grasp. Uh, we're not really going to use too many like um, pipe wrenches or adjustable wrenches just because we're still in fifth grade. Let's start with the bait or fourth grade too and let's start with the basic tools. When we're using a tool, sometimes when we tighten things down, we want to make sure that they're tight. If we tighten a bolt down or a screw down and it's not tight enough, the part can come loose and then it can be, be used, it can become dangerous. I think we should go with the two grunt tight rule. You tighten down your bolt until you can't tighten it anymore and you grunt and you grunt when you tighten it down. Okay. When you're older, they have certain wrenches that are called torque wrenches that put so many pounds of force down on the objects that you're working with. With what we're doing, there's not going to be that need. So the two grunt tight rule is a pretty good rule to go by. Okay. Pliers. The last thing we're going to talk about is pliers and we have all sorts of pliers. Here's the basic standard pair of pliers. All right, pliers can also be used to grab and tighten things or grab and loosen things. They can also be used to grab things and apply a force to pull them out and remove them from things. Like nails without heads are usually what I've used pliers to pull out. Uh, they are a wondrous little tool, and I think you should have one in every tool case that there is. Some other types of pliers is needle nose set of pliers. If you've got to get them down there somewhere, somewhere really really tiny it's hard to reach a little bit easier to get to than a normal set you have some that are adjustable pliers like this that can grab a hold of bolts to help you tighten or loosen loosen them if your wrench doesn't work for this project you have some type of pliers that have special cutting tools on the end with that case we need to be very careful not to pinch our fingers we need to be very careful not to cut ourselves uh, on any kind of plier that might have any kind of wire stripper or pinching tool on or cutting tool in the middle of them. Okay. Now the expectation is that you've written all this stuff down, maybe made a few notes on the extra things that I said. The next part of this is going to take the multiple choice test so that you can get certified on hand tools, which I pretty much expect every student will do. And finally have to show myself and the other Makerspace Lab administrators that you know how to use each one of these tools appropriately. Please remember that any kind of shenanigans with any of the tools is going to get your certification revoked and then you won't be able to use these things if we're not using them appropriately. Uh, some things in Makerspace that you don't need a certification to use. Tape measure. But we do need to know how to measure things and we do need to know a little bit about math. Okay. Most of the tape measures that we're going to use are done in inches and feet. Okay. Although you might use metric measurement from time to time. A ruler, whether it's metal, whether it's wood, I don't need you to be certified to use a ruler. Hopefully you know how. Glue. Remember, just a dot, not a lot. All right. So from here, you can download the PDF, take the multiple choice test, turn it into myself or Miss Craig, uh, and then we'll schedule a time for you to show us that you know how to use tools. See you in the next video.